Welcome to the quick tutorial on how to create a nebula world shader. So to get started, we're just going to drag a window over from the side and we're going to open our shader editor up. I'm going to delete the cube. We're not actually going to have anything in our scene today. Uh, we're just going to switch to the world editor for the nodes and we're going to switch to rendered view on our right hand side here. So if, for example, I change the background color to black, we now see black and then we can also get rid of our grids. So we are just purely seeing the output from our world shader. So the first thing we're going to do is create some stars. And we're going to do that with a noise texture. And we're then going to add in a color ramp to control how much of that noise texture we see. If we hit shift control and then click on any of the nodes in here, um, we can actually see the effect of that node in our viewer. So what we're going to do here is we want something starry. So to make that starry, we're going to go 250, get a lot more fine grained detail in there. And then our color ramp, uh, if anything that is currently black, we can shift across and then it means we get far less black and we can make our whites more white. Uh, let's go somewhere around about there. Actually, let's maybe drop that detail if that makes a difference. Yeah, it's a bit better. Um, so let's go to about there. So we now have some stars that are then going to go into our background. Uh, highlight those, control J, they are stars. From there, we're then going to start adding in our nebula clouds. And again, we're going to have another noise texture. And you'll see a common pattern here. And another color ramp. And we're actually going to need two of those. So I'm going to duplicate those, um, Shift D, and then Y just to drag it down in the Y domain, um, or in the Y axis, link those up. And the first one that we're going to use, it's going to be quite a big scale um, we can see uh, looking around here we just want some higher detail so let's go for like a detail of six just so you can kind of see it a little bit more cloudy um, actually let's go even bigger than that let's go uh, nine and once we actually do a little bit of more work in a second you'll see the effect of that point nine we're getting a lot more kind of fluffiness and, and graininess going on um, and then similarly we're going to increase the black to be more black and the white to be a bit more white but not too much um, and we can play around with these once we've got uh, things a bit more connected. On the second one, uh, we're going to go for something a little bit more broader. So the kind of like larger shapes of our clouds. So let's try about three. Again, we want higher detail, not too worried about the roughness. Um, black is going to become a bit more black, but what this is going to be is the color of our nebula. So for example, we'll just pick a like a kind of like yeah, cyan type color and then we're going to merge these together with a mix R uh, color and it might be mix RGB depending on which version of Blender you're using and the color is then going to be mixed with a color dodge and the factor is going to go all the way up and we end up with these really strong highlighted um, colors here and we can start playing around with um, what we want that to look like again in a second once we actually then merge the stars with the nebula themselves so the stars are going to go come into the top here the output of the color dodge is going to come in the bottom and we don't actually want a color dodge we want a mix and it's going to be a really really small factor um, which you can kind of play around with but now you can start seeing if we increase this factor a little bit you can start to see the effect of the nebula um, and I mean, you could even, you could stop here, right? Um, that's actually a fairly decent output already. Um, but the last thing I am gonna do just to show you a little bit of extra option, if for example, you were doing a scene, you only wanted half the screen filled with some nebula or you didn't want the nebula taking out the whole environment, um, we can add yet another, guess what, noise texture uh, with a guess what, color ramp and link those in together there. And this is what we're going to do is going to be called our boolean so this is going to have a really low scale uh, really high on the black really low on the white and the output of this is basically going to be multiplied with the color dodge so um, we're going to use another mix node rgb color dodge is going to come in the top this is going to come actually in as the factor and then this is going to be and we're going to multiply so where this is white where this is white it will then multiply this by black which I appreciate can be a little bit confusing but the output you'll see here um, if I change uh, that's not so good uh, color multiply 
let's see what this looks like when we put it into here and see if it makes much of a difference. We're not getting much of an impact on that. I'm curious to why. Maybe the factor needs to be higher. Yeah, there we go. So the white needs to be whiter, basically. Um, the white is our number one. Our, and then that's going into black. Um, so yeah, we can see here. So if we pull the white to that side, you get more um, multiplication to the black, which then means you end up with some more empty space um, and could be looking pretty good. And then finally, we're just going to put that into our background node, which will look identical, um, but it just gives us one extra control, which is the strength. Um, so you could actually make the stars or the nebula stronger. If you want the stars to dampen a little bit, um, you could always drop this to be um, a little bit lower in terms of the, the type of white that we're injecting into it. Actually, they're technically gray stars, but where we're making higher emission, it looked pretty good. So yeah, that's a really quick guide to how to create a world shader for some nebula.